Does everyone know who Steph Curry is? Yes. Let's hope they pull through today. <laughs> but Steph Curry, even if you don't like him, the guy has done impressive things. He's won a lot of games, got a lot of um, awards. And Steph Curry, for the last couple of years, has been a pretty uh, dominant role within his team. But even if you don't know Steph Curry, there's a lot of people, when we look at famous people, sometimes it looks like they've always been good. And we don't see what it took for them to get where they are today. And so we have a video about Steph Curry, about how he became so good, that we wanted to show you. Pretty amazing, huh? But, you know, a lot of what people don't know about Steph Curry is there's a lot of things he needed to change to become great. He was such a small kid that in high school, he always, he was so weak, he had to shoot from his hip. And so he'd shoot the ball from his hip to get enough power. His dad, who is also an NBA superstar, told him if you keep living or doing it like that, you'll never make it to the pros. Because if you shoot from the hip, everyone's going to get in your face and stuff you. And so one summer, he had to lift his shot up to shoot like this instead of from his hip. But he was so weak that he couldn't, make, he couldn't even make the basket from the three, make it to the hoop. He was so weak. So the whole summer, he would practice lifting and getting his shot so he can get it high. Then when he joins the NBA, his first, like his third season, he began to sprain his ankles like every game. He got five sprains in the first season and only played a third of the games. And at one point he said, I didn't think I'd ever make it in the NBAs. But then somebody examined him and found out the reason he sprains his ankles so much is because he places too much weight on his ankles and he needs to distribute the weight through his hips. And so he goes on this whole shift in how he plays to distribute his weight differently. And he goes to focus on his core Lifting maybe a deadlift, you know what a deadlift is, 200. He went from 200 pounds deadlifting to 400 pounds. And he just focused a lot on his core, upper body, and waist so he can distribute the weight differently. But he was open to change is one of the key things. Even though he was good at what he did, he was open to do things differently to make him happier. And all of you are the same way. It may not be with sports. Could be grades. Could be sports, or it could just be happier, but everyone here wants something and wants something different in their life. It could be, you know, really anything. And these things, they just won't happen. So you won't just wake up happier one day, or you won't just wake up smarter, or you won't wake up being better at whatever it is. You have to do things differently. And one of the key things of successful people is they know how to make a goal and how to achieve different goals. Now, when making goals, you have to look not so too far, but, you know, just what you can immediately do. For instance, me, this is me and my wife, we have a baby due in less than a week. And so it's going to be my first son born in a week. So I've been thinking lately of what I could do to prepare and have a mini Isaac. And maybe in the future have a second baby. But you don't, want to look, you don't want to look too far in the future. Like, if I was setting goals, I might set some to be a better father, but I wouldn't want to set some to be like a better grandpa. Because that's like too far, right? If you think about what college am I going to, what am I going to do for a job for the rest of my life, you know, you'll paralyze yourself, and you won't know where to start. And so you have to start with something doable, something that you can immediately change now to be happier. And so what we're going to do now is take the next 15 minutes to set a goal. And so with goals, there's kind of a process that you follow. The first process is whether in your mind or on the paper, you're going to list things that you think you could change to be happier. Now, don't list anything on this that won't make you happier. Pick one of these areas. Let's say it's a family. Family is usually the most effective to change happiness. And let's say... You want to do the dishes every day. So once you pick what you want to be better at, you have to pick an action that you can do. 
you can't just say, I want to have a better family. You have to pick an action. So specifically, I want to do the dishes. And once you pick that action, you want to have some kind of number that you can measure if you're doing better or not. Because if you can't measure it, then it's really hard to know if you're actually getting better. And so you could track, for instance, the number of times you cleaned the dishes this week. And on this goal sheet we're giving out, we want you to make this goal an action that you can do this week to be happier. And with this action, every day, you're going to have a metric to know if you did it or if you didn't. And we're going to go around to help you make this goal if you need help. But again, something simple, something you're not already doing. So if you already do the dishes, don't make that your goal because it won't change your happiness because you don't have to change. But pick something you're not doing that you can do this week that will make you happier. Any questions?